On a bright day in the early 90s, Adolfo and Lola exchange vows before their beloved families and friends. Lola is pregnant with twins, and Adolfo believes she will be a great mother. After the traditional church ceremony, the couple walks out to receive congratulatory blessings from their friends. Suddenly, everybody gasps in horror as they stare at Lola. Adolfo turns around and sees Lola having a medical emergency. He rushes her to the hospital and waits for the results while watching the news. The doctor tells the couple that Lola has suffered a miscarriage, and the damage was so much that she will never have another child. The information makes them so sad, and Lola sinks into depression over the loss of her children. Adolfo tries to make her cheerful, but nothing works. He constantly talks about adopting a child, but Lola remains quiet and isolated. One day, Adolfo and Lola go to the nearby convent for blessings. The convent doubles as an orphanage, and Lola locks eyes with a girl with a scarred left side of her face. Adolfo speaks with the abbess, but soon realizes that Lola is nowhere to be seen. The two find her listening to two eight-year-old twin children playing music. The abbess shares a little history about the orphanage and explains they are always looking for people to adopt the children. She introduces them to the two kids, Tin and his sister Tina, and they hug Lola, asking her not to leave. When the thunder strikes and the two kids hug Lola tightly, saying they are scared, Lola is touched by the children wants to adopt them. Although Adolfo is reluctant because the children are much older than he expected, he agrees when Lola insists. The abbess then gives them everything they need for a trial adoption period. On the drive home, the children ask Adolfo to turn off the music as it gets too loud. They entertain the couple by singing and bringing a merry mood on board. The children are impressed by the large house and set off to explore it immediately. Adolfo sees how happy the children make Lola and promises her to do whatever possible to keep that smile on her face. Lola makes dinner and goes to get the kids. She finds them playing in the nursery she has prepared for her children. She is visibly shaken, but calms down and shows the kids their room. Soon, the family settles down for dinner. Before that, the kids give the couple presents for adopting them. They give Adolfo Jesus' crown and Lola a rosary so she can share in the mysteries of faith. Adolfo starts eating, but the children stare at him blankly. They remind him he hasn't said grace yet, so Adolfo stops and prays. Adolfo and Lola are not religious, but pretend to be for the children's sake. Later, Lola tucks the children in bed, and they ask Lola why she doesn't have kids of her own. Lola explains that she can't get pregnant, but the kids stay positive. They urge Lola to pray for a miracle to happen. Lola finds the kids' extreme faith a little naive, but tries to understand them due to their strict religious upbringing. In the morning, Lola watches the children play outside. She calls them into the house to have breakfast. This time, Lola refuses to say grace, as she has difficulty believing in God nowadays. The kids ask her to promise not to interfere while they do something. They promise that this will help renew Lola's faith. Tina grabs a plastic paper and starts suffocating Tin until he points at something. Lola tries to intervene, but Tina reminds her she promises to stay put. She watches in horror as Tin starts gasping for air. It is only when he points towards something that Tina lets him go. Tin explains that he has seen the Lord and asked him to bless Lola with a child. Despite this frightening experience, the kids start playing and Lola forgets everything that happened. The kids enroll in school where a mean student, Pedrito, calls them Dracula's children. At home, the kids ask Lola who Dracula is and why they were called his children. The kids also wonder why they are so different from the other children at school. Lola shows them her leg brace, and the children are surprised to see she has a fake leg. Lola tells the kids that she was a movie star, and one day they were at a caravan for a production. Sadly, a fire broke out, and Lola woke up to find her leg on fire. She was rescued, but her leg was too wounded to be saved. Lola explains that people often bully those who do not fit in, but that is because they are special. But the kids are quite confident that the Lord saved Lola so she could adopt them. Lola then puts on a movie for the children to watch while she spends some time with Adolfo. As the days pass, the family tries to bond as much as possible, but Lola starts getting disturbed by how religious the kids are, especially when they quote the Bible in all their explanations. On the other hand, Adolfo feels their behavior is to be expected since they were raised by nuns. One night, the kids request Lola to play a game since they are having trouble sleeping. The game starts out fun, 
as they play with pillows. The kids then hide, and Lola starts calling out for them. Suddenly, the kids try to suffocate Lola, asking her to see the Lord and ask for a miracle. Lola tries pushing them off, but Tin is holding the sheet so tightly, making it hard for her to free herself. Lola is frightened by the experience, and the kids come to apologize for their actions, asking that they be punished. They say that at the convent, they would be caned if they misbehave. Shortly after, Lola's dog, Kuki, keeps on barking at the kids. Lola tries to calm it down, but it bites her hand and runs away. One night, the children wear some Chinese masks in the house and drug Kuki. They bring him into the home and use knives to do something to the dog. In the morning, Lola wakes the children in the bedroom. She assumes they've been playing with jam since they are covered in a red substance, but Adolfo knows it is blood. The kids take the couple to the dog, saying they were trying to clean his soul. They had poisoned Kuki and then wanted to cleanse it, hoping it would resurrect. Seeing the dead dog brings so much sadness to Lola, and she cries in pain while the kids hug Adolfo, apologizing for their mistake. Lola cleans up the mess and watches the kids say their prayers outside the house, still in their bloody clothes. Later that night, Lola finds the children crawling on their knees. Tin collapses, and Lola is horrified to see the kids have tied forks to their kneecaps and are crawling on them. Lola cleans their wounds, and Tin asks if Kuki will come back to life if they pray hard enough. Lola tells the children that they cannot take the Bible literally. She then compares it to the fantasy stories the kids read in school. The children maintain that Lola will have the faith they possess one day. Tired of having the kids refer back to the Bible on everything, Lola forbids religious talk in the house. The children are angry, but they have to obey Lola. On New Year's Eve, the family is having a good time exchanging gifts. Tin bonds with Adolfo while Lola and Tina bake something in the kitchen. The peaceful night is interrupted when Lola collapses. She is rushed to the hospital, where the doctor reveals that she is pregnant. This is a miracle for the family, and Lola cannot believe she might be a biological mother a few months later. Soon, Tin and Tina go to the church, but Pedrito makes a comment mocking them. Tin feels bad about the comment, but Tina promises the Lord will make it right. After the mass ends, Pedrito falls in the middle of the church. He's rushed to the hospital. A few days later, Lola gets a call from Pedrito's mother. She reveals that Tin and Tina had been the last kid seen with Pedrito before he collapsed. She knows Pedrito was bullying the twins, but feels the punishment was not worth the crime. However, Lola refuses to believe the children could do such an evil thing and hangs up the phone. Still, she cannot seem to let the accusation stand. She enters the kid's bedroom and sees the Bible on the nightstand. Lola opens it and finds two drawings, one of the kids eliminating the dog and the other showing the kids hitting Pedrito with stones using slings. She shows this to Adolfo, but he thinks the kids are just happy to see their bully suffering for the way he had mistreated them in the past. The children wake up to find the Bible missing. They call out for Lola and see her placing the Bible and several religious relics in a box. She explains that the children will get their stuff when they are older. One morning, Lola wakes up and finds the children playing with Adolfo. The children point at her, and she's horrified to find her hair shedding. She goes to the bathroom to shave it off, telling Adolfo that the kids are behind her hair loss. They are punishing her for forbidding their religious beliefs. Lola goes to the convent, asking if the children have had problems with the other kids in the orphanage. The abbess explains that the kids are naughty like other children. She says they are angels, and Lola is the one with the problem of not seeing it. Lola calls Pedrito's mom and learns that the boy had died a few days earlier. This makes her so afraid of the children that she starts being distant. Soon, Adolfo has to go to work. Lola asks him to take the day off as she doesn't want to be left with the kids, but he promises to return soon. Adolfo advises Lola to sleep, and when she wakes up, he will be back. Lola wakes up to find her hands bound on the bed's frame. Tin is standing before her, imitating a famous comedian by making a skit with Lola's brace leg. Then, Tina comes in with breakfast, claiming that the milk has magic powder to help the baby grow. Tina tries to feed Lola the milk, but she doesn't open her mouth, fearing the magic powder is the same poison used against Kuki. Tin entertains Lola, but stops when Tina asks for his help. He grabs a syringe, intending to inject the milk into Lola's belly. Lola screams hysterically and rips off her binds. She rushes into the kitchen and grabs a knife, screaming for the children to leave her alone. Adolfo returns with a bouquet of flowers, and the kids run to him, explaining they want to help her rest. 
Then, they find out the magic powder in the milk is sugar. Adolfo looks at Lola as though she has lost her mind. Suddenly, Lola's water breaks, and they rush to the hospital. Lola wakes up in the hospital, and Adolfo explains that everything went successfully, and their son was born. Tin and Tina come to say hello to their little brother, but Lola is still reluctant to accept their affection. Lola then says she wants the baby to decide his religion when he is older. However, Adolfo reminds her that it depends on the majority's demands. After a while, Lola and the baby go home. The children are playing in the pool while Lola does a few house chores. She goes to the chicken hatch to get some eggs, not realizing the kids had planned for everything. The children see her leave, and they take the baby outside. Tina breaks open the box to retrieve their books. They try to tell Adolfo their plan, but he shushes them as he wants to play his game in peace. Tina starts reading certain biblical verses, while Tin holds the baby upside down. Lola gets some eggs, but on the way back to the house, she sees the children holding the baby. She rushes to them and takes the baby, who had been submerged in the water, but luckily the baby is fine. Lola angrily slaps the kids and then calls Adolfo a bad father for letting the children harm the baby. The children explain that they were trying to help the baby, but Lola is furious. Adolfo gets up and grabs the Bible from the children while they cry continuously. They call him father, but Adolfo coldly says they aren't his kids. The couple then returns the children to the convent. A few days later, Lola and Adolfo go out for dinner. Lola wonders whether she was a bad mother to the children, but Adolfo wants them to focus on the future. Sadly, Lola feels so guilty for abandoning the children at the orphanage. The baby starts crying, but Lola refuses to comfort him, saying Adolfo can do it too. This angers him, and he shouts at her to console the baby. Lola and Adolfo have been having issues after dropping the kids at the convent. She feels that Adolfo is always working and rarely has time off, making him an absentee father. Meanwhile, Tin and Tina settle back peacefully in the convent. The abbess helps the kids say their nightly prayers. On this particular night, the abbess reads a Bible verse that warns everyone about reaping what they sow. Tin and Tina look at each other as if hoping that Adolfo will pay for taking the Bible. On the drive back home, there is tension between Lola and Adolfo. It is raining heavily, and Adolfo nearly hits something on the way. The couple wonders what is on the road, and Adolfo suspects it is a deer. The couple gets home, and Lola sets the baby to sleep in his nursery. She finds Adolfo watching a TV program, and she wants to go to bed, but Adolfo asks her to sit with him. Adolfo sees that Lola has removed her ring. He realizes she is considering leaving him, and he apologizes for behaving badly these past months. The TV loses the signal, so Adolfo gets up, saying he will fix the aerial on the roof. Shortly after, Lola hears the baby crying. She thinks about calming him, but stops when the baby stops crying. The TV starts working again, and Lola calls Adolfo to come back. She hears commotion from upstairs, but assumes Adolfo has tripped over something. Shortly after, Lola puts on the ring, showing that she has decided to give Adolfo a second chance. The lights in the house start flickering, and the TV loses signal again. Lola investigates when she hears some noise from some part of the house. She sees tiny, wet footprints and follows them. She's surprised to find the radio playing the children's favorite song. Lola calls out for the children, but does not get a response. She switches the radio off just as the lights go off completely. She finds the meter box, but switching it on does nothing. She calls Adolfo, asking him to come and fix the lights, but gets no reply too. She walks outside and is horrified to see Adolfo on the roof's ledge burning. It is still raining heavily, and Lola remembers that the children used to call thunder and lightning the wrath of God. She then rushes into the house to run to the rooftop and help Adolfo, but stops when he falls. He gets into the house, crying in pain, and Lola thinks of getting a blanket to help extinguish the flames. Sadly, Adolfo trips over the sofa and falls on it, accidentally setting the house on fire. Lola can only watch in horror as her husband passes on from the flames. She remembers her baby and rushes upstairs, hoping to grab him and exit the house. Unfortunately, she doesn't find him in his crib. Lola starts searching the house from room to room, looking for her child while the fire spreads rapidly. When she doesn't find him, she sits in a room and cries. Suddenly, she sees the mark left behind by the crucifix the children had hung in the room. She grabs a cloth and suffocates herself, hoping to see God and get the answers she seeks regarding her child. 
She gasps for air but keeps holding on for a few minutes. She then staggers out of the room and hears some noise coming down the hall. She finds that her baby has been returned to his crib. She grabs and hugs him carefully, making her way out of the burning house. She collapses in the rain as she watches her house burn down. Lola wakes up in the hospital. The abbess visits her and explains everything that has happened. She says that Adolfo had been hit by lightning while on the roof. Luckily, the baby is fine, and this is a true miracle. Lola asks about the children, wondering if they survived too. The abbess looks at her weirdly, revealing that the kids were never in the house. She is sure of this because she personally woke them up that morning, and she is confident that the children are innocent. Her confidence makes Lola realize that the children have always been innocent through everything that has happened. Lola has a funeral service for Adolfo, and as they bury him, it's revealed that she has adopted Tin and Tina. Thanks for tuning in. A thumbs up would be amazing because I've got some bills to pay. Back in my bag and I gotta brag, I do this shit for real. When we was down and we had nothing, we had to share a meal. We put the shit in overdrive with no steering wheel.